genetically engineered crops in agriculture, a worldwide experiment on people, animals and nature. Cultivation of genetically engineered crops like soy, maize, cotton or canola have far-reaching consequences. 90% of genetically engineered crops belong to the corporate agricultural group Monsanto. The rest are owned by Syngenta, DuPont, Bayer and others. Genetic manipulation of crops can have uncontrollable consequences. The function of genomes is only partially understood, but foreign genes are still introduced into crops. These genetically engineered crops are widely cultivated outdoors where they cannot be controlled. Currently, 90% of GE cultivation occurs in the Americas, particularly in the USA, Argentina, Brazil and Canada. It seems researchers have forgotten that genetically engineered crops once outside can no longer be controlled like they could in the lab. GE crops can self-replicate and pass on their new characteristics to neighboring crops, penetrating the fields of farmers who want to cultivate their crops without genetic engineering. Adverts from the genetic engineering lobby claim genetically engineered crops produce higher yields, but this marketing mantra is a complete hoax. It has been shown that crop yields for GE crops are no higher than normal crops, but farmers must buy more expensive patented genetically engineered seeds each year. This forces them to become dependent on corporate giants. But that's not all. Genetic engineering giants also produce pesticides and herbicides. There are two characteristic traits of genetically engineered crops. They are either resistant to herbicides, in which case the genetic engineering company itself produces the suitable herbicide, or the genetically engineered crop emits an insecticide. Whether or not the crops are resistant to weed killer or give off poisonous gases, not only weeds or pests are eliminated, other beneficial field growth and some living creatures are killed as well. But nature adapts, so pests and weeds develop resistance to pesticides. And that means that increasing amounts of stronger pesticides will be used. Especially grave consequences are observed in this respect in monocultures. For example, in South America, rainforests and other natural landscapes are destroyed every day to make room for genetically engineered monocultures and pasture. At the same time, the soil and groundwater are poisoned. On top of that, the genetic engineering lobby claims genetically engineered crops can help to reduce world hunger. Genetic engineering is not the answer. There is enough food on Earth. The problem is that it's not distributed fairly. But the fact is that most genetically engineered crops find their way into the livestock chain. So they end up as meat or dairy products in supermarkets. Along with all the destructive effects on the environment, one last awkward question remains. How do genetically engineered crops affect humans and animals? The answer is, no one knows. Therefore, it's important for you to carefully consider which products you buy.